One of my favorite books of all time is called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. He also have, has another book called The Surrender Experiment, and both of them are fabulous. Um, I would suggest you read them if you're interested in your soul's growth and kind of understanding a little deeper into this world. But I was listening to his podcast this morning on YouTube or one of his, his short YouTube videos, and it reminded me of how much I love the book. And so what they were talking about is our thoughts. So our thoughts can actually block our heart. And so when, he was talking about when we don't get what we want, our head and our thoughts go round and round and round, and it starts to cloud our, our, our heart. It starts to cloud our life force, the thing that makes us happy, the, the joy in our lives, because all the thoughts, all the negative thoughts of the things that aren't coming our way start to pile in. And he said, really, if you think about it, your heart is still there. Whether or not you pile in negative energy because you didn't get something you wanted, or whether you learn to accept what is, your heart is there ready to shine, ready to produce joy, ready to enjoy this beautiful life that God's given us. It's only when we think we don't get our way, our head starts to pile in those thoughts. So he likened it to the clouds in the sky. We always know the sun is there. The sun rises and the sun sets. It will always do that. It is something we can all count on. What we can't count on are the clouds that get in the way to block the sun. But we know the sun's always there, right? We know it's day and we know when the sun leaves, you know, it goes around the earth and it's night. We just know that whether we have clouds or storm or whatever we have in the sky, it's that truth that we know the sun is there. It's the clouds, it's our thoughts that block that. So I thought that was a beautiful analogy of how our thoughts actually block our heart from being open and free. And so my job as a fascial stretch therapist and a Reiki practitioner and a somatic experience practitioner is to really connect everyone back to their heart, back to their mind, body, and soul, to become whole, to walk into who they were designed to be. So when our thoughts bog us down and block our heart, we don't feel that joy. So how do you get rid of the thoughts? Well, in the book, Michael Singer talks about never shutting down your heart. No matter what comes to you in life, no matter what hits you, keep your heart open because it's part of your heart's journey. This is part of your journey. Everything that is happening around you is part of this journey. And the more we rest into what is and not resist, do we find that we can have joy in the midst of a storm, peace in the midst of craziness? So that's how he talked about it. He talked about just keeping your heart space open, no matter what goes on, and accepting what is. It's that book, like I had mentioned in one of my videos, Power Versus Force, the human chart of thoughts. It's when we have courage, willingness, acceptance, and neutrality. Can we move up with our thoughts and our vibration? Same thing with the untethered soul. Basically, when we come into a place of neutrality and a place of what is, then we accept where we're at, knowing that it's part of our heart's journey. It's part of our journey here on this planet. So that was one thing he talked about. The other he talked about is when our heart is open. Think of when your heart is open and it's so happy. A lot of times it's because you got what you wanted, right? Uh, or uh, things are going right, great, and things are going your way. And so he talked about how that really is truly our true state, is when we have this open heart of joy. The trick is to not let the clouds and our thoughts to go in front of our heart and to block our heart from shining. And so that's the tricky part in life, is how to shine your energy, how to shine your light, even in difficult times. I'm gonna kind of skip over to now what I do for a living, and if you follow any of my, any of my videos, it's I really do help people to get rid of those blocked energies that are bogging them down through fascial stretch, through Reiki, through God's uh, divine support and help, through somatic experiencing, experiencing the here and now. So once someone gets clear and their heart energy and their body is clear from things that cloud them, cloud their, their joy, cloud their, their, their chi, their life force, um, they are now ready to op be open and receive the joy that is available to them. It is only by our decision, it is only by our intention that we can walk forward in our joy while we're in a difficult situation. And I don't know anyone on this earth who hasn't gone through a difficult situation or, or trauma or stress or anything like that. That's, 
that's part of it. But really what we're trying to do is we're trying to learn how to be in harmony with the things don't, that don't quote our way, how to step into peace and joy with our heart wide open, even when quote, things don't go our way because it is what it is and life will constantly change and unfold in front of us and if we relax into it and we allow divine guidance then we do see that we are always being guided no matter what happens i have a quick story about my my daughter and her son are i'm sorry <laughs> my daughter and my son-in-law are moving to um, another state and of course, you know, when we're in that place of dishevelment, when we're moving and we're, we're packing things up and we're, we're making sure the cars work and all that stuff, it, it just seems like no fail, things go south. And so for them, both of their cars started going south and, and some other things that they had hoped to be done before they moved up to their new place would be in, in place. And so it really was causing my, my daughter stress. And I can so relate because she's my daughter. <laughs> Just kidding. She's kind of cut out of the same cloth. And it's like, we had to take, so I took her off to the side and, or, and, I, and I just talked to her. I said, sometimes we have to back away from a situation in order to see the bigger picture. And I said, you know you're gonna get there somehow, right? You know you're moving, right? She's like, yeah. I said, so maybe your cars were supposed to break down because they weren't sufficient enough to get you that long haul. And maybe you need to get a new car or maybe you need to just trust that no matter what comes your way, everything will work out. I said, I don't know what your lesson here is, um, but I do know that if you rest into things and you don't fight them, you, you look at it differently and then all of a sudden everything changes. And she's like, you're right. And I said, you just don't know. Maybe your car would have broken down like, you know, 50 miles out of town and you're all packed up and ready to go. And you just don't know. So um, open your eyes to the wonder and mystery of life. Open your eyes to what is, what is in front of you. That doesn't mean being complacent. That is for sure. It means open to what is, rest into what is and then the flow of life co opens and then everything starts to open and you just feel like no matter what goes on you just feel like you're in this flow and you're just kind of moving through life in on this river of some sort um, another story i have is when i was a director um, it was what i did my whole life i was a director of this high-end fitness uh, club slash resort and it was like you know prominent to to, to be or I guess for my ego, like, wow, I am the fitness director here and um, movie stars come there and, and it is well known and, and I met a lot of famous people when I was there and, and all this stuff. And yet I was being called to go open my own practice. And I remember thinking, are you kidding me? Like, I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna leave this. This is like the epitome of my career. And as soon as I got into that job, I felt God pulling me somewhere else to be on my own. And it felt like I was jumping off a cliff. It felt like I don't know the right time to go. I don't know the right time to move forward. And so those clouds of doubt started to block my heart. And then I had to kind of step back uh, through some, some people that came into my life that really helped guide me was I had to step back and look at the bigger picture and look at really what I want, what I was being called to do. And that really was to have my own practice and that really was to open myself up to more healing than I ever could have as a fitness director. The, that time and space was done for me in my life. It served me well, it got me to where I'm at, but I needed to move forward. And it wasn't easy to decide to do that. And it was like, jumping off a cliff financially you know you're you're leaving something that has a stable income and you're jumping into the unknown but i'm going to tell you this every time we jump into the unknown and we ask god please guide me and you feel like you're being called somewhere trust it trust it so anytime when i first started to get into my own business and those clouds started to block my heart energy and i started to doubt the decision i made I thought, no, I was called here. And I pushed the clouds away and I opened up my heart again. And then as soon as my heart was open, people started coming to me and I started to get all kinds of 
referrals and it started to just take off like crazy. Like I have never not had a busy moment in my um, four years of being self-employed. The other thing is, is when you open up that heart, that heart energy goes out. It goes out to this world. And so therefore my other prayer was, I wanna be helping people for emotional, physical and spiritual help. And I put that out there. I opened my heart to that. And guess what? That's is, that is what I'm getting now. I'm getting so much of that. So I'm going to start back at where I started with this conversation was the untethered soul. Be untethered to this world, but, be, but have your heart open. Be untethered to the outcomes that happen in front of us because maybe we don't understand why they are happening that way, but there's something better coming. Be untethered or unattached to things that we think make us valuable. Like if I am this in life, or if I have this much money, or if I have these people I hang out with, or if I have busy weekends and people all wanna be with me, well, that must mean I am somebody, or maybe not. Maybe where you're called to be is coming more inward, coming more into your heart space, being very choosy about who you hang out with, maybe being okay with quietness, I mean, again, I could go on and on with this, but when we open up our heart and we step out of the old thought forms and the old ways that we used to do life and we step into the new and the surprise and the wonder of life and we ask for divine guidance, then what comes is what comes. And just, I always tell my clients like, buckle up your seatbelt because when you ask, you receive. And when you step out of doubt and you step out of that, closing your heart down with our thoughts that actually are like clouds that go over our heart. And you open up and you keep that heart space open no matter what, no matter what comes your way. That is when truly you live from a place of joy within and not without. You are finding your peace within no matter what the world has coming your way that you like and coming away that you maybe would choose not to have. It all is part of the plan. Thank you and have a great day.